Okay, and we're just continuing our discussion on the strategies for white in the game of Nephitops with corner rules. And um, so you, you really want to make sure that you attack the corners uh, with an open game. I kind of mentioned that, uh, went over that a little bit um, before, but, you know, open games playing, playing to these outer, you want to put all your men on these outer three rows that are surrounding the, per the perimeter of the board. So that's going to take moves where your pieces become disconnected. If you're just moving your pieces one or two spaces at a time, that's a really close game, and that's there's just no point in it. Because uh, remember, the goals of the attackers is to make a perimeter around the board. So you're just helping them out if you're just moving these pieces, and then he's building a perimeter. You want to act very quickly. You want to aim for a fast-tempoed game, and um, because that's the faster the game, the less uh, options you know. Black's going to have the, the slower game you play with a closed game, the more chances he is going to have of, of um, achieving his goals of the game. So never play a closed game. Um, and also remember that it's best to attack uh, the corner with a king over any other piece. Um, you know, attack a corner with whatever you can. But if you have a choice, get the king. Attack, attack a corner. Like say it's that with a king because now he's he's there if if you just you know attack with an, another piece and didn't attack with the king then now you have to make extra moves to get the king where he would have been if he if it was him on the on the previous move so um uh, always remember it's best to attack a corner with the king and it's best in general to to use the king to to make any capture um all all pieces you know, he can capture any piece at all. Any piece that White captures is an important piece. You don't have to worry about which one you're capturing. You, you want to capture to your heart's content because um, it's going to uh, really hurt really hurt Black and uh, put a damper in his uh, game plan. Um, and, and remember, you have nothing to worry about. You don't have to, to worry about the king's safety. Uh, in this type of game, he's he's really powerful, and now you can't do those things in in, in playing to the edge. Um, you know, playing to the edge, the king has to have his his pieces sort of with him, and a lot of, a lot of the reason you don't have to have the king's pieces near him so much is because this remember this square here acts as another man on the whenever whenever there's a black piece next to there. Now this is going to be a white piece so he he kind of has potential of this being a piece on his side so that's why he can attack the corners by himself and um, <clears throat> you know be very aggressive about it um, so he wants to force I pawns to isolate um, on, on, on these square on these two squares around the board and you do that by moving the king to Really, the best the best row for the king to be on is the is the one next to the the last one. This this penultimate one, the second to last row around the board. When he lands there, you know, <clears throat> you know, uh, now 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 a piece is isolated here. Maybe he can attack it, but maybe he's got another piece here that he can attack it with. So it's a good way to force isolations on 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 that square that you want. Uh, to attack those two squares, and um, you know, so and when he's on this one, now he's attacking this one. He wants he's going to isolate there, and that's that's really great. So always always remember, if there's one thing to remember out of this series, just remember that this second to last row is is really great. Um, in the series on edge tops, uh, I went over sort of pawn chains but in this game you really don't that that strategy kind of doesn't transpose to this game um, it's all about getting as many men on the on the outer three rows as possible um, and and with a king that captures too you're not you're not going to need to be uh, to be making chains because the, the king can be very very aggressive <coughs> um, the king can you can try and gain tempo by sort of letting black attack pieces and and then playing in another sector of the board, 
So any piece that you that you play in black just you know, it's out in the open somewhere and you know, black just black just, you know, once you know you can tell right away that black is just a, a player where he's just gonna attack pieces and sometimes you could you could just let him have it and just play another another move, another aggressive move in another sector of the board. There's four sectors of the board, you know, one, two, three, four. So if if you're playing a guy and he's just real silly and He's just all he's worried about. Uh, he's just he's not making a perimeter. Instead, he's just focusing on capturing pieces. Sometimes just let him do it and um, make another aggressive move in another sector of the board. That way, whenever he captures that piece on his next move, you'll you make another move in that same sector that you moved before, and you'll be ahead in tempo over there. Be looking really good. So just keep that in mind. Um, so another really really important thing. I want to discuss was these three rows again that go around the board you know one two three and then one two three uh, and then all, all around the board the three outer rows the placement of the king is really important um let's compare them on each row um again if you remember i've mentioned it a couple times before this the the last row is really not that preferred the king gets trapped there very easily. This something like this happens quite a lot. And if we play by the rules of the North America manufacturer who made this, um, uh, who made this set, um, that's a loss. It's not a loss in, in the Fetlar Championships. They make you play through it, but um, still, your you don't want your king stuck like that. That's a bad situation to be in. So the outer row, a lot of players, they're just they just sort of think that the corner they the, the corner sits on the outer row so they think that the king needs to be there in order to get there but he really doesn't uh the best place to get is is here cuz this remember this is another winning square these two are winning squares so 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 you really want to be on this row <clears throat> um that's the best row to be on it's most preferred it's preferred to, for him to wait there um when anytime, anytime he's on this this second to last row, he's waiting. And well, what is he waiting for? Well, he's waiting for another defender to clear a path. So, you know, if he's here and this is here, he's he's waiting for one of his men, either come there or here, so somewhere to get rid of this guy. Just somebody to get rid of him, because as soon as that he's that's what he wants. Um, or he's you know waiting to you know like. And I showed my other, but he, maybe he's waiting for this guy to be stupid and leave or something like that. Or, um, uh, you know, he's just, he's just kind of sitting and wait there. The last, then this, this row is still pretty good. Uh, it's not as preferable as this one, but it's not as bad as this one. And it's actually pretty good because now the king, when the king's here, he's not, he's kind of waiting, but he's waiting to attack. Um. Uh, and so he's he's waiting to attack a piece here. So, you know, he's waiting for this right here. And then hopefully, ooh, as long as nobody, you know, he doesn't have that to deal with, to postpone a little bit, uh, he's going straight there. So when he's here, he's waiting to attack. He's here, he's waiting uh, to for one of his men to capture. When he's here, he's just stuck. Your, your hope to God that... <laughs> You know, somehow that's cleared. You're, you're trying to get off of there. Um, in this game too, uh, when I when I talked about for my other series, especially on Ed top, Edge Top, I um, spoke about two fronts of attack. But in this game, except in the beginning, you can um, there's a couple things to a couple times I've seen where where there's you can have two fronts of attack just in the opening, but by the by the end. You can't because you're just this game. The 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 fights are all localized at the corners. And edge tops you can because the king can uh, threaten the e any edge. Uh, it's a very different feel to the game here with the edge not available. He has to he has to get to the corner and then have the they have these little fights down here, and then if he's in a situation where he has to leave, then he has to move. And then he moves across board and he fights down here. And then if he has to, he either wins or he has to leave. And then he moves down here and he has to um, 
keep doing that. So uh, just keep in mind that um, you know towards the end of the game you, you can't really in the, the middle and the end of the game you can't really have two fronts of attack. Um, you also do not have to keep pieces close to the king. I kind of went over that before because in this game um, the king this the corners will act as uh, as a, as a white piece as long as a black piece is at, the, at uh, you know on one of the two squares uh, encircling it. So um, the king can be very aggressive and he can be very aggressive by himself. Um, so you don't if you try and transpose rules from from my other series that that one really doesn't you don't have to be strict with that one <clears throat> um, and then try not to really move the same piece around unless you're unless you're it's for a capture um, you really want to especially in the opening you really want to develop all your pieces um, equally and make just make sure you get the king off early and you want to try and for, force attackers to to open the outer two rows, um, and then put the king there as soon as possible. So, you know, I think I think before we looked at any time that the second row is open, it's a win. There's no pieces on it other than the king. And same thing for for so it's these two rows. Any time that these two rows are open around the whole board, put the king there, and the game's over. Um, and so, you know, if you see a piece here, then try try and lure this piece off. You know. Um, or capture or take them off, you know, things like that. Um, so watch for open rows, and then review your lost games. Play on the internet and review your lost games, and when you lost as black, that'll help you play as white, because you look to yourself, well, what did white do to me, you know, and then how can I do that to, to someone else? So review your lost games when you, when you play black. Uh, open up your uh, key ranks and files again those two um, uh, watch for forced win opportunities when, that's also whenever you play black uh, see a lot of wins are forced like in chess where it's just automatic when you, you know um, the moves become you know they're, they're mandatory moves this best move this best move uh, he has to move there he has to move there um, so so watch for whenever you, you had a forced your opponent had a forced win and you were playing black then review that game uh make sure you don't abandon an unfinished attack uh, unless it's necessary a lot of players the they'll be down here and then they they they'll um leave it too early um uh cuz one thing is that when you when you when you move down to another corner a lot of times, just by what's going on, um, some of these pieces will, will, will continue moving, and so that if you ever went back to it, it'd be, you're just kind of worse off than, than when you left. Um, so it's it's usually you can't go back um, to, to the initial attack. So really, you got to really make sure that you follow through with the first attack. Um, that 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 may have had potential. It's it's a hard judgment call because. Uh, um, you know the king. The king does will have to change directions um, often, but uh, it's really a, you got to do it at the right time. Um, you know, if you start to be outnumbered, you know uh, that might be a good time to leave. Uh, but if you if you had them outnumbered and and, and you know you left too early. <clears throat> that would have been a bad time. Um, so, also don't forget to utilize pieces that are um, that are behind the black barriers. So, uh, you know, you know it's good to have a guy a guy outside. That way, uh, you know, he comes up here, and then um, you know he can do do this one now. Now there's sort of this space right right in here. Um, I don't know. That's probably not the best example, but but having a guy out, having men outside, um, can 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 work sometimes to open holes. Uh, not much more else to cover. There, there's one last thing. Um, this is a a gentleman's website that I play. He's the, actually the champion. Uh, 
you know, once again, this is this is a version that's played at, at the uh, World Nephitop Championships in uh, the island of Fetlar, Scotland. This gentleman, uh, Tim Millar, is the uh, two-time world champion. And this is website www.tim-millar.co.uk. <clears throat> and um, there he's got uh, some of his own, a little, a little bit of the strategies, that nothing that uh, I've haven't gone that uh, um, you know I've nothing that covers what what I've covered. He's got he's got two really good things though that um, well a lot of good things, but two two of them uh, to mention, and that is this is one of them. He says that this is a pawn structure that he kind of likes and to make as white, and he calls this the tower. And it's an impenetrable uh, uh, <clears throat> structure, and he says that you can use it to uh, to get through barriers for black. You can you can try try that out. Uh, so he mentions that on his site. Then um, for uh, so he has that for white. Then another. Then the other the, the only other thing he has for the white strategy is uh, at his level of play. Whenever. The, the better you get at this game, the more easier it's going to be for you to play um, the black pieces. You might lose a lot of games as black at first, but once you use sort of these principles uh, in this series that I've been showing you, it, it's going to get a lot easier. And um, uh, so on his level of play, you know, he's uh, considered a, ma a master of, uh, of this style, and he, he's a very intelligent man. Uh, so he has these things. The other thing he has is, is draw forts. So uh, because of uh, um, because it's sort of easy at his level to sort of get surrounded, um, you have to force draws a lot, especially at the tournaments. And and at the tournament, there remember that black is, um, I mean that white. It, if white's surrounded, it's a t it's a tie. Uh, in contrast to the rules of this manufacturer, but it is, and so he has these ways of surrounding the king. The king surrounds himself, and then he just moves in perpetuity between two squares, and that's a draw. And so he's uh, on his website. He's got just different ways of making those draw forts. So you can check that out. And that's about it. So uh, next thing, uh, I'm going to make a video of. I'm not really going to go over openings or. Um, I've already discussed as much of the end game as I want, and um, I might do a few more tactical things, and then I'm probably going to make a video just on um, some analysis of, of this game.